What's up, guys? Happy New Year's to you all. All right, it's been, once again, quite a while since I recorded a video. I think at least two months, maybe a little bit more. That's at least what YouTube says. But I've got a couple of old games kind of moldering in my archive, and I'm rather concerned that they are going to disappear before I get a chance to record them. So I need to attend to that pronto. And uh, the first game I'm actually going to cover is from way back on the 19th of July, if you can believe that. Somehow this game has stuck around for almost five months. Actually coming up on six now, I guess. Yeah. Um, and it was played against a really good friend of mine online, actually, a guy named Andrew, who goes under the moniker Five Color Bad Stuff. Kind of an old throwback reference to Five Color Good Stuff from, I guess, different eras and so on. I think all the way back to original standard format back in the 90s. Actually, I remember playing Five Color Green, which I guess is Five Color Good Stuff. Anyway, um, Andrew's been sort of steadily evolving over the last couple of years, playing a lot of games against uh, me and Nate, and has gone from being kind of a neophyte in the format to being a real formidable opponent. And his latest deck, uh, which he has honestly given uh, both Nate and me a real hard time with, is uh, this black, red, white thing. It's partners, of course, as you can see over here, um, uses the ubiquitous Tim of the Weaver, probably the best partnered commander in the game. Um, I think it's pretty much proven now that Timna is superior to Thrasios and probably Kraum and a few of the other decent playable partners by nature of the fact that she's a very cheap source of card advantage with lifelink and also in good, powerful, disruptive utility colors. And so she pairs really well with blue-red commanders, blue-green commanders. And in the case of Andrew's deck, uh, actually pairs up with this, Jessica Thrice Reborn, which is a commander I'll admit to have com having completely overlooked this. When I first initially saw it, I read it, I kind of went, okay, well, that's kind of groovy. It's a planeswalker that's also a partner uh, that you can use as your commander, of course, and has some kind of cool abilities, scaling abilities, kind of like, um, the name eludes me, but that red, white, green, the Naya commander that costs three, and then every time you play it, it comes into play with more counters on it from the command zone. And she kind of has that same mechanic, but unlike, um, unlike some other commanders, she has an immediate impact on the board, and in fact... You can play Jessica and immediately minus, she comes into play with only one counter on her, but you can, uh, you can minus X to deal one damage to up to three targets. So you can smoke small creatures and uh, has just tremendous utility, kind of allowing Timna and some of the other creatures in the deck to push through. Although I don't really think this deck has a ton of creatures in it. My guess is probably maybe 15 to 20. What it does have, though, is it has every obnoxious, powerful, multicolored and single color disruptive and removal spell that's available in black red white so tons of uh, hand destruction tons of artifact destruction enchantment destruction planeswalker destruction good planeswalkers kind of just everything everything that uh you could really want to play in these three colors so his deck is definitely three color good stuff um and the deck has proven to be incredibly powerful and effective against the types of decks that nate and i use when we play commander uh, we tend to play slower control-ish decks, um, often three to four colors, and utilizing a ton of counter magic and stuff and going for a late game board state. And this deck can kind of crush that strategy really, really oppressive against artifacts, which is how we tend to ramp our mana base. Well, all the decks we play tend to be pretty land light and uh, utilizing on artifacts for acceleration. And this deck can really break that up between the mass artifact destruction, singular artifact destruction, and uh, hand destruction as well. And you can often just find yourself so far behind. And with Timna... Uh, dealing out steady damage and steady card advantage, you can just you can just fall behind and never really uh, be able to claw your way back into the game. So I always know when I play against uh, Andrew these days, I'm in for a challenge, and uh, this game is no exception. Once again, I'm really glad the replay still cooperates. I do believe it kind of fails at the very tail end, but um, we'll see how it goes. And uh, I believe I've gone first. I'm going first this game. Um, not an incredible hand. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention, of course, I'm with Brea. And this is Brea that was built uh, right around July. Nate and I were playing this deck a lot back then because some new cards had come out. I think the D&D &D set had just come out, so we included a few new additions. Um, I may highlight them when I sack this Verdant Catacombs in a couple turns, but um, one, co one card foremost is the card Portable Hole, which made its way into this deck. One white mana, basically exile a cheap permanent, and it's an artifact. Which is, it's such a weird card. It's a white artifact. and Anyway, you can get it with um, numerous effects in the deck can actually fetch it. It kills Soul Ring and Mana Crypt, of course, and you can get it with uh, Tezzer at the Seeker. Just kind of all-around amazing card. You can even Enlighten Tutor for it. So it's given the deck actually some more flexibility in dealing with problem permanence. 
and uh, modal cards like that are just incredibly strong. And they just it just seems like they keep printing more and more and more of them, which of course is kind of the way that you want Commander to uh, evolve as a format. But anyway, I've talked for five minutes, so uh, let me jump into the game here. Um, I am going to keep the hand. It's it's not the best, but I do have a counter spell in turn two to deal with uh, the fast Timna. And of course, I have Enlightened Tutor. And more importantly, I've got Enlightened Tutor go and three black mana sources. And any time, and because um, Andrew's deck isn't running any counter magic that I know of, it does have discard. If I'm able to just play two mana sources, Enlightened Tutor end of turn, and throw down Necropotence, it's pretty damn hard for his deck to win, uh, given the fact that I have 40 life and a commander that can uh, gain life if I need it. So pretty pretty happy with the hand. I do have tithe to solve mana problems if anything scary happens. And of course, I've got counter spell as well to uh, stave off the uh, the first Timna that he plays. So definitely going to keep. All right, neither of us mulligans. Oh, I guess he, no, it looks like he did mulligan, in fact. So I'm going to lead with Command Tower since that gives me all the options without taking damage. And probably just planning on, if he doesn't do anything of consequence, I can probably Enlighten Tutor at the end of the turn or or hold on to it maybe and then play Verdant Catacombs and do the Catacombs tie thing. But we'll see how the, how the turn goes here. All right. So he leads with the Badlands, and he's got Thoughtseize right off the bat. So I really, really want the Enlightened Tutor to get Necro, and this is actually even a better opportunity. Sure, I'm probably going to lose Counterspell, but I've got the mana to play Necropotence, and it's actually going to... The fact that I went first and I'm going to lose a card means that uh, the Necro will be even more effective, so I'm pretty happy to see that. Get that out of my hand. Would have been much worse if I had actually started with the Necro in my hand. Okay, oops, damn, jumped ahead. Okay, next time I search, I'll try to uh, pause to see if there's any other cards in the deck. So now that he looks at my hand, of course, he takes Counterspell. All right, not too bad. All right, there's the Necro I just tutored for. So I'm going to play the Verdant Catacombs here I, uh, so I can do the little Tithe trick. And, um, yeah, all set up, basically. He doesn't really have a lot of outs here that he can really disrupt this with, given the fact that he's already cast his Thoughtseize, leaving him probably with just... Maybe Inquisition of Kozilek and uh, and uh, Duress as a way to disrupt this card. Sure enough, ugh, so backbreaking. When he did that, I was I was actually playing in tandem with Nate, and I just slumped in my chair and just went, "Oh man!" And Nate, who's generally a, a much more much more stalwart about these sort of things, says, "All right, well, game on." I guess so. Sadly, of course, he's going to take take Necro. Just gross. I wonder if he top decked that or if he um if he drew it that turn. But either way, I, I can at least do my Tithe trick. And he's got Mana Bolt, too. Okay. Well, in response, I'm going to just do the Tithe thing. Okay. Not going to click again. Good. I can actually see the deck. See if there's any other cards that jump out at me as recent additions. This is such a it's such a cool deck. There's just so many neat things you can do. I think if Braid is fairly new. Oh, yeah. Fracture, Enchantment, Artifact, and Planeswalker. Just very, very powerful modal spell. And I think we added Rip Apart as well. It may not have been in the deck yet um, when I made this. Oh, yeah, there's a Liquid Metal Torque as well. Very, very awesome card that just synergizes so well with tons of the effects in the deck, just giving you the ability to utilize um, cards like a Braid and Vandal Blast and stuff to take out problem permanents like Planeswalkers and can just do all sorts of groovy things you don't even really expect. Sometimes you'll maybe use Liquid Metal Torque to when you're attacking with your um, your Urza token or something, and he'll uh, the person will block it, thinking that uh, you have a set number of artifacts in play, and then use Liquid Metal Torque to turn one of your other things into an artifact to pump the, the token up. Uh, pretty damn powerful. And uh, let's see here. Any other cards? There's the Portable Hole I mentioned before. Artifact, one white mana. So good. Um, yeah, because really nobody's playing with things that remove little cheap artifacts like this, really, unless they do it en masse. Um, any other cards in here that are different? Okay, that kind of looks like it. Um, we did tour... Oh, yeah, there's a Triome in here as well, the uh, red, white, blue Triome. We kind of tinkered around with um, removing the equipment package or part of it, but it just seemed like it, it had so much utility against so many decks and so many problematic things. Jitte in particular, so powerful against... Uh, it's, so incredibly powerful against um, against uh, planeswalkers like Timna and stuff. And I don't actually think that the right now. I, I think we may have taken Sword of Feast of Famine out of here. I think that was the one card we did take. But with enough, um, with both the Umazawa's Jitte and of course the uh, Skull Clamp, Stoneforge Mystic is really quite worth it. But anyway, I'm going to go grab two uh, two sources of white here. 
I'm going to grab the Triome since um, I'm not really doing anything on my next turn given the fact I only have land in hand. But he is down to three cards, and I'm actually kind of in parity, and even if he plays Tim in the next turn, I'm still going to have the perfect answer to it in the form of Brea. And I do have Yawgmoth's Will in the deck, so it's not totally insane that I might be able to will out the, uh, the Necro later on in the game if I'm able to get up to four black sources. All right, I got preordained. That's pretty good. So I'm going to play the Triumph here for sure, although I may preordain first just to see what I get. Copy Artifact and Shackles. Huh. Well, Shackles and four, five islands is nearly a hard lock against his deck until he draws artifacts. So, of course, I'm definitely going to keep that. I don't really want the Copy Artifact. I'm not interested in copying a Mana Vault. And it's too risky to probably keep it and uh, try to copy a Shackles because his deck does play a ton of instant speed artifact kills. So I'm going to put the Copy Artifact on the bottom and just draw the Shackles. And play my Triome here. Oh, I guess I play the uh, I guess I play the Tundra. It's a bit of a strange play, actually. I'm not sure. You know what? I think maybe the reason why I did this in retrospect is uh, I may have because my hand is so weak right now. I may have actually held onto the Triumph. I do have five mana sources outside of the Triumph, so I may have actually just held this with the expectation that I might cycle it later on. And I still want to get three. Uh, I want to get more islands into play, but I, in re I, I think probably playing the Triumph makes more sense here. But I do understand why I might have done that. So I play, tap some more mana here. Five, that's real scary. And I start to see these mana being spent. I know exactly what's coming. Oh, God. I mean, this was just... How brutal was this? Thoughtseize, Inquisition, Mind Twist for four. Pretty disgusting. All right, well, obviously, any any hope I had, really, of, of salvaging this game just kind of went out the window. I mean, that is just so utterly backbreaking. And now I'm in a position... Fortunately, I do have Command Tower... Watergrave and Tundra. So anything that isn't a generic colored mana source should allow me to at least play my Brea. <sighs> so brutal, though. The only saving grace here at, at all is that he had to tap Mana Vault to play... Uh, well, and obviously he tapped Mana Vault to play Mind Twist, but he did not have another land, which means I might get a small reprieve. I don't draw a land, but I do draw Spellseeker. Not too bad. All right, I'm going to look at what's here. Lots of choices here. I could go with the really conservative play, something like Swords to Plowshares, maybe to just take out Timna, or um, maybe my own Mind Twist, possibly Mana Drain, but I have to just expect that my opponent plays a Timna next turn. I've just got to expect that that's the next thing that happens. And if that's the case, as good as Swords to Plowshares is, I ultimately decide that Demonic Tutor is a better choice because it gives more, me more flexibility. Because if he doesn't play Tim in the next turn, he just passes, and his deck does have a lot of reactive cards, then I might be able to Demonic Tutor for something way more impactful, like a powerful Planeswalker, a Dak Faden, for example, or something, and um, and start taking over the game with that. So with that in mind, I think that the flexibility of Demonic Tutor outweighs the immediacy of some of the other cards, and I decide to keep that instead. All right, let's see what he does. He takes one damage. I'm just crossing my fingers that he doesn't hit a land, and lo and behold, he does. Perfect land in Blood Crypt. So now i got to face down Timna the Evil, and now i got to draw a land. And of course, I would have been 100% prepared to uh, Demonic Tutor, probably just for the Swords to Plowshares here, if, uh, if I had not drawn something better. But fortunately, Cavernous Souls right off the top. That is gorgeous. All right, so I'm going to do that. And Brea comes down. Man, you just feel... This is one of these... It's one of these moments with this commander where you just breathe a huge sigh of relief. It's just so much board presence, huge 4-4 that's very, very tough to remove for a lot of decks given the fact that it's black and 4, four health, and uh, the two Thopters for utility. Just so much board presence and command that um, I'm quite happy to have drawn it. All right, so goes back to his turn. All right, and he's just sending in Timna. So... Obviously, because of how this thing works, right, if I block here, he can play Jeska Thrice Reborn, and then he can ping off um, he can ping off the Thopter tokens and maybe the Spellseeker. But of course, I, um, yeah, I don't want to block with the Thopter tokens. I think the utility of that is just too important. I need to have the evasion. i got to figure, if he's attacking here, he's got a way to kill Brea. I really want to keep the Thopter tokens around uh, so that I can potentially threaten or I can block more later on. Plus, of course, I have Demonic Tutor in hand, and if I go Demonic Tutor, I can draw, I can cast Skull Clamp and start clamping tokens to regenerate my hand. So with that in mind, I decide that it's more important to risk Brea's life and, um, 
and potentially lose the Thopters. So it is an interesting attack. I figure he's probably got something like Lightning Bolt maybe um, because he didn't have enough mana. Because otherwise, could you imagine he goes, he plays his commander, the red one, with an extra land. He goes deal 1-1-1 one, 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 and then bolts down Breha and attacks. Just brutal. Um, but when he attacks straight into that, I'm, just, I'm thinking about what he has, and I actually mentioned it to Nate as soon as, he, uh, as, soon as we blocked that he's got Toxic Deluge. Sure enough, he starts paying life. Deluge for two. He clears out the board. And then he's got a... Oh, God. He's got a Wasteland, too. <sighs> I mean, this is just insane disruption. Double discard, mind twist, Deluge Wasteland. <laughs> Absolutely nasty. And he still has his Planeswalker left. He, unfortunately, he can't cast Timna for a little bit. And I do have a Demonic Tutor, but totally backbreaking. At least I draw a land. And I take this opportunity to go Demonic Tutor for Mana Drain. I'm doing this, of course, because um, it protects me really from any truly backbreaking plays like a uh, like him casting Necro, for example, or him playing a, a, some, some kind of Planeswalker. Plus, if I Mana Drain just about anything, I can just follow up and play Brea again. And even though I'll have no cards in hand, at least I'll have something powerful on board in some way to affect the game. Plus, it may just give him pause for a while and buy me time to just draw some more mana. Yeah, and sure enough, he does not run his Planeswalker out into it. I do see this. He plays a Grim Monolith. Kind of feels like a bait spell to me, so I just let it go. Expedition map. Okay, well, that's that's not bad at all. Because that's going to get me to Ancient Tomb, which gets Brea back on board if I really need it. And I'm still sitting on Mana Drain. It's a bit of a strange card in his deck, actually. I'd have to ask him why it's in there. Because it does seem like his most of his cards cost only a couple of mana. Doesn't really seem like it fits the theme. Mana Vault, of course, is just so good, you kind of want to run it and everything, but Grim Monolith seems a little bit odd to me. But maybe he's got some bigger stuff that I don't, I'm not aware of. Angrath's Rampage. All right, so this is definitely the kind of thing I was talking about in terms of uh, utility modal spells that he runs. There's just tons of cards like this. All the commands, Kolagon's Command, probably uh, Fiery Command, and um, or Fiery Confluence. Just, just things that you can just crush your opponent with if the situation is just right. In this case, he's having me just sack an artifact. This is a phenomenal play. I love this play, actually, because right now, if you notice, and I, I think the only mistake that he made, honestly, is I think playing the planes here was, was a big mistake. If I were him, I would have cast Angrath's Rampage and waited to see what I would do with it, right? Because you cast Angrath's Rampage, I've got an expedition map, I can just sack it and go get an Ancient Tomb. But by casting Angrath's Rampage, he sort of forces me to be in a position where do I do I just let it resolve and let him kill Expedition Map? Do I sack it? And that lets my guard down, and he might be able to follow up with something worse. And of course, if I do let, um, if I do mana drain the Rampage to keep the map around, then he, uh, which obviously I guess that doesn't make a lot of sense, but um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. But if I do sack the Expedition Map instead of letting it die to Ingress Rampage, I'm tapped out essentially, and I can't mana drain his follow-up. So if he keeps his planes in his hand, he casts Angrath's Rampage first. I almost certainly sack the Expedition map, and then he can play Planes and cast Timna. By doing it this way, at least, he, he's communicating to me that he can, in fact, follow up with Timna, and I might actually just let the Expedition map die. But I decide, ultimately, even if he follows up with Timna here, I'm going to get the Ancient Tomb, and then I can just play Brea to deal with his... Um, I can to deal with the Timna anyway. Plus, he's going to have to tap the Grim Monolith. And sure enough, he follows up with this play. So totally fine with that. Fracture. I've got my own Fracture in here. Destroy target artifact, enchantment, or planeswalker. Pretty nice. I'm not even, I'm not 100% sure this card belongs in the deck, mainly because its two best modes certainly are artifact and planeswalker. And well, two mana things, I mean, it's, I guess it's just an improved disenchant. And we have been running disenchant in the deck for a long time. So I think actually that was the switch, um, just because you've got basically a disenchant that can also kill uh, Jace the Mind Sculptor or something if you need it to. Brea doesn't tend to struggle against Planeswalkers the way that some of the other control decks do by nature of the fact that the commander can just kill it. But uh, Fracture, yeah, certainly better than Disenchant, I think, in this deck, and I'm sure he's got it in his. So I'm going to sack, go get Badlands, and down comes the Brea. All right. So he still continues to take damage here. Plays Tide Hollow Sculler. Very, very cool card you don't see too often, but certainly makes a lot of sense in his highly disruptive deck. And of course, he's going to have to take Fracture here since I can just kill the Sculler with it if he doesn't do that. And he can't attack. Brea does her job. All right, come on, deck. What are we looking for here? 
Yogmas will. Well, not quite. I need more black mana. There's a lot of cards I could draw here. Treachery would be phenomenal. Um, could draw, could draw the Jete, or I could draw Skull Clamp. So gorgeous. God, I'm so glad to see that. But it's not, it's not that cut and dry in terms of what do I do here. I mean, obviously the Thopters give me a lot of board presence. He's down to one card in hand, so that's that's a big deal. And if I start. If, I, if he gets in a position where he's able to start attacking with Timna again, he can very quickly draw his way out of the deck since he has so much board interaction. So I can't just sack these Thopters away willy-nilly. At the same time, if I'm able to get up to 8 mana, which should happen pretty quickly if I draw uh, 2 or 4 extra cards, then I can just replay Brea again and uh, and get the Thopters back. And Plus, I should draw into some other artifacts that I might be able to use for Brea food. And as long as Brea is just sitting here and I've got mana drain, it's pretty hard for him to break through with his guys anyway. So with that in mind, I'm just going to play play the clamp, clamp down one of these guys, see what we get. Jace and Misty Rainforest. Fantastic. All right. That's delicious. All right, I'm not attacking with the other Thopter. I kind of want to keep two blockers up potentially, and uh, just so I've got Brea food if I need to sack it for something. So we'll see what he does here. One, two, three. Yeah. Unfortunately, I don't have, I don't have four blue mana that doesn't include Cavern of Souls right now, so I can't play Jace and Mana Drain. All right, he still continues to take damage. But yeah, that's the one real weakness of uh, Andrew's deck that I've seen is that if you're able to kind of blunt the Timna rush at the beginning and able to shore up the board a little bit, the deck does tend to struggle and fall behind. I imagine it's kind of like Edric in the sense that it's one of those decks that. You find yourself really far behind and often losing, kind of like Yuriko as well, losing to just unexpected board states involving lots of creatures that your opponent might just gum the board up with. Um, obviously, his deck is hypertuned for 1v1, but in uh, even in 1v1, there's just lots of decks that just spam a lot of creatures out on the board, and before you know it, there's you know six guys hanging out. And if you don't have any real effective way to remove them, I mean, my decks run Rolling Earthquake and Deluge and stuff, but if you don't have any way to get around the creatures, then your entire card drawing engine doesn't work, and you're drawing one for one, and meanwhile your opponent is ramping up to huge things, and you can just fall behind and die. So um, that's definitely the vulnerability of this deck. He's got Mother of Runes, though. That's a fantastic combo with Timna. And of course, if it gives Pro Blue to, uh, to the Timna the Weaver, I can't block it. So I'm going to have to deal with the Mother of Runes in one way or another. He does not attack. And I elect not to, I don't want to mana drain the Mother of Runes either. I just think that the position, my position's too too fragile. And I also don't want him to play, I don't want him to play this thing and uh, kill off my, my Thopter either. So I'm going to let it go and just figure I can deal with it another way. Pass the turn back. Yeah, I'm not sacking the Misty Rainforest in a turn for two reasons. One, because I want the reshuffle for Jason. Two, I want to keep more islands in my deck since um, I've already lost a couple island fetchers and stuff. I, I just want to keep the island density up because I really want to draw another island here. Divining Top. All right, well, that is actually extremely timely because not only can that get me to an island, but it's a second artifact which allows me to deal with Mother of Runes. So I'm just going to clamp. I mean, I could attack here, but like, really, who cares? I'm just going to... I'm just going to draw two right now. I figure, all right, I believe I'm just going to draw another artifact here. And if I don't, well, I might have to sack, might have to sack Brea and, uh, or play the, uh, play the Jace and bounce the Mother Runes that way or something. Let's see what we get. Oh my goodness. Treachery. Could not be more timely. All right, so now it's time to go get another island since I need five blue or just to get more land in play. And I'm cast Treachery on Timna the Weaver and I'm thinking, if this if he has some instant speed removal that's cheap and he can kill his own Timna in response, it's gonna it's gonna really suck if I can't untap my land. But if I'm able to untap my lands off the treachery, there's a very, very high probability that uh, the game's in the bag here. Since I've got the mana drain. Sure enough, as soon as it resolves, just super fist pump. Okay, so now the question is, I need to kill off Mother Ruins. I can't let that thing live because once a turn goes by, it really, really makes creature removal with Brea problematic. So I gotta figure out what I want to sack here. And after some thought, I realized I can probably just sack the uh, the Coalition Relic and the Divining Top. It's going to take a mana commitment to do that. But first I can attack and see what I get off Timna. There's no way in hell he's going to block. Plus I actually get to hit him for 4 damage. He is down to 21 with the Mana Vault in play. And it's not totally inconsequential. Let's get to draw. 
sorry, the replay may be a little slow on some of these clicks. Okay, and there's that. Uh, there's another blue mana source also. Just glorious. All right, play that and look at the top. Crucible, Remand, Tezzeret the Seeker. Gorgeous. All three are just fantastic. All right, I'm putting the Remand on top right now just to have some extra defense here. I'm playing this, and now I'm going to go with that play that I talked about before. And you can do this neat trick with the Divining Top where you can actually tap and sacrifice it. Um, tap and sacrifice it. Or I'm sorry, tap to draw with it and then sack it. So that's what I'm going to do here. And I believe I'm sacking Brea right now, actually. I'm going to sack the top after uh, tapping it to draw. So with the ability on the stack, before you put the top back on top of your library, you can sack it to Brea to get the effect. And then uh, you do still get to draw the card, of course. But instead of going on top of your deck, the, ta the top just goes to the graveyard, which is totally fine. Yeah, I'm sacking Brea here to finish off Mother Runes. That gets that threat off the board. And I've got Remand. And uh, a coalition relic here also, so he can't even he can't even strip mine to, to force something through, which is fantastic. And uh, yeah, I mean he's welcome to attack with Tidehaller Sculler into his own guy, and give me my fracture back and make his Timna cost seven mana. All those things are completely acceptable. So I've got mana drain and remand, and it's just incredible how fast this game just switched in the other direction. I mean that's just hence the effect of this insane card in Brea. Draw four cards, you often just dig your way out of problems immediately. But there was a lot of really sketchy sketchy positions and uh, decisions along the way. The game was really hanging by a thread for a couple of turns. So he plays Monastery Mentor. Not really terribly afraid of that right now, since he, uh, he can't even really follow up with any spells. I assume he just drew it this turn, and nothing in his hand probably costs one. So I'm not really terrified of the Monastery Mentor. And this gives him the opportunity to charge. In time now. Yeah, this replay is just funky. It just takes a lot of clicks to make things happen. It's probably because it's just so old. All right, so I, I definitely wanted the Crucible as well. That's why I didn't reshuffle with Flooded Strand. There's lots of yummy stuff in the graveyard here. All right, I got a mana there. play my crucible and this is fantastic it's going to go put demonic tutor on top of my library Let's see it gone and i'm oh, sorry i don't jump ahead too far so i'm just playing the. this is just entirely a tempo play i'm just playing jace the mind sculptor here to get him down on the board bounce the monastery mentor back he, he only has four mana here and i've got two counter spells so this is basically just buying time i'm hoping he'll play something big potentially i can mana drain and just slam brea again for uh, reduced cost but my mana is starting to get pretty pretty disgusting right now anyway and I've got a Demonic Tutor sitting on top of my library. All right, so he's just going to play the Mentor. I'm just going to remand it back to his hand for tempo. And there's that strip mine I was talking about just a turn earlier, but of course it doesn't do anything now that I've got Crucible going. Please strip mine my Mystic Sanctuary, and that'd be awesome. All right, Factor Fiction. We're definitely rolling here. Time the Demonic Tutor. So lots and lots of choices here. I'm at 25. There's so many good options now. I could just go in Demonic Tutor for Yogmoth's Will and uh, play a bunch of crap out of the graveyard, get Shackles, get Necro, get Copy Artifact, cast uh, <laughs> Spellseeker, cast Divining Top. There's just a million choices here. He's down to just two cards in hand. But I decide ultimately to just go get Tezzeret the Seeker. I think that Tezzeret just speeds this up quite a bit. Yeah, actually, you know what? I think I may have actually gotten Yogmos Will here. I, I don't really know. The, the game is bugging out at this point. Because you notice I look at his... I look at the top of his library. I'm fate sealing him here because I just want to get some more counters on it. And I think at this point the replay crashes. Yeah, you can see time going off on his clock. But, um, yeah, I think actually... I, if I if I remember correctly, I believe that we did get uh, Yogmos Will. And I, use, I used uh, Jace the Mind Sculptor on him. And I think the plan was to basically just... Play Brea. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, just play Brea in a turn. I did cast Factor Fiction as well. Um, but the writing was basically on the wall at this point. As soon as I cast Yogmoth's Will, it's just completely insane. Because I go Copy Artifact on Coalition Relic. I get to cast Spell Seeker to go get another counter spell. Um, play Top. Play Expedition Map. Play Necropotence. Cast Enlightened Tutor for more stuff. And I've 
got a complete command of the game. Plus, I'd cast a factor fiction and drawn three or four extra cards off that too. So, anyway, um, we I think we played for a couple more turns. You can see some time running off the clocks here, but I don't think we're able to actually get past this turn. Not terribly important. And uh, that was the end of the game, and I breathed a very deep sigh of relief having defeated uh, a vicious black-red-white deck played by a quite competent pilot and uh, clearly almost fine-tuned to destroy my control-based strategies and staved off just a completely soul-crushing beginning with Thoughtseize and Inquisition and Mind Twist and Deluge and Wasteland and every other horrible thing that can happen to you at the start of a game of Magic and Commander. So, uh, glad the replay kind of cooperated. I'm honestly surprised it stuck around this long, but I'm glad you guys got to watch it. And I've got a couple more in the pipeline, including uh, a match against the by far the craziest person I have ever met in all of my years playing Magic Online. That'll be in a couple replays from now. So stay tuned for that. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Happy New Year's to everyone. Happy holidays, and uh, good to be back. See you all later.